All right, I will request to share my screen. Let's see this one, share. All right, um, and yes, Abby, thank you for mentioning the code of contact, conduct. I do wanna say though, um, I would love any thoughts, feelings, or feedback that people have on the repository. So I think Abby said like, try and keep something about criticism. You feel free to criticize this site. This repository only works if it works for all of you. Um, so a little bit of context about the migration, um, just in a nutshell, um, we were with B Press. We had a B Press repository. Um, we, I think we started our subscription with B Press back in 2010. Um, and then nearly three years ago, now we started the process of a migration. Um, B Press was acquired by Elsevier and we were concerned about the direction that they might take as a whole. Um, and then, sorry, Abby, I'll let you and Megan focus on uh, admitting people. We were worried about the direction they would go. And we also just kind of got frustrated being with uh, a proprietary software like B Press um, and not being able to you know, kind of control our own destiny and implement some of the features that we wanted to implement. Um, a good example of that was uh, ORCID IDs. We'd been getting a lot of uh, questions about the ability to integrate ORCID IDs with the repository, um, with the BPRESS repository. And it just, you know, we, we submitted our, our request to BPRESS every year saying, you know, we love something that could integrate with ORCID. We'd love to be able to work with ORCID. How could we get ORCID IDs integrated into the repository? And their solution in the end was to give us a text field where you could enter the ORCID ID. There was no connection to ORCID in any way, shape or form. It was just a text field. It's like, all right, if this is the kind of, of service we're getting to meet our users' needs. It's just not where we need to be. So um, we put out an RFP. We got a couple of bids back by a couple, I, I literally do mean to. Um, and uh, at Meyer, they're a DSpace provider. They came in as our winner. Um, and so we've been working with them um, on migrating the repository. Um, there's a handful of, of things we've been doing. Um, our top priority was maintaining statistics, um, was developing author profiles. Um, those two were, I'd say, yeah, our top two, making this service oriented for our authors. Um, but another big priority we had was restructuring the repository. Um, for those of you who dug into the structure, and I know not a lot of people did, um, a lot of people really love their author profiles, which I do as well um, for myself. But um, the repository was previously structured on like the university structure. Um, so everything was broken down by colleges and departments. And then within those departments, you had centers that were nested there. Um, and then like, uh, I'm looking at Jay right now. So you had like a sociology publication, sociology reports, sociology conferences, and things were not flexible. That was a really rigid structure. And so if you had um, a center that, was, that lived within two colleges or two departments, that was not an option within B Press. It could only live in one place and you had to choose. You had to decide right then and there. Um, or another good example is like uh, the anthropology department merged with world languages and cultures. And there was no way to accurately ref reflect that merging in B Press. Like, nope, it, they, they were two separate things. So they have to continue to be two separate things and you need to decide where future stuff goes. Um, so one of our objectives with migrating to DSpace was to really flatten that structure, uh, make it a lot less complicated. Um, and that's kind of reflected down here. We have a uh, student research and that's generally like ET or theses and dissertations, creative components, things like that. Then we have a uh, university scholarship and this is a broad range of it's both um, like historical scholarship, like historical, uh, like the, the fact books that we have for the university or historic student journals um, and things like that, because that's university scholarship. But then it's also your work that you're publishing as well. That's reflected here. And then we have the author profiles. Um, and underneath that, there's both academic and administrative profiles and then academic and administrative units. This is kind of out of the box language for B Press. I'm gonna, or not B Press, D Space. <laughs> um, I'm going to work with them to change that. But these are the author profiles and these are supposed to be the department web pages. Um, I'm getting a little ahead of myself though. I should give you kind of just a tour of the site. So there's the, just the search bar right here. Um, if you're looking for something, the best and easiest way to do it is to just use the search bar. With B Press, I told people don't, don't ever use the search bar, don't do it. You will never find what you're looking for. You could enter the exact title, you're never gonna find it. With D Space, you actually can. Um, it's, it's much better that way. Um, and then there's this one, two, three down here um, to kind of manage your own submissions if you want to. Um, you can create an account, you can start a new submission and you can edit a submission in progress. I will tell you, we're working on getting some kind of warning here. Um, 
you can log in and create an account, but that is basically the only thing you can do at this point. We've disabled the new submissions until our team is kind of up to date on how to use uh, DSpace um, and how to how to attach items, how to uh, manage. Because um, what they would have to do is if you create your account, you start submissions, then our team is going to have to start doing copyright clearance for you. And that requires like a lot of back and forth within the system. So we want to make sure our team knows what they're doing so that we can help you um, do this as best as possible. So you can create your own account right now, um, but you can't do anything beyond that, which is a little bit frustrating. So I want them to put like a coming soon here for these features so that people aren't confused by that. And then like I mentioned down here, there's the different ways you can search for student content. Like I said, creative components and theses and dissertations are there. And then university scholarship expands out to conference proceedings, journal issues, journal volumes and journals. This is the stuff that's generally for like um, content we're getting from special collections and university archives. Um, and then your stuff should be, why did they need to expand this beyond seven items here. Um, faculty scholarship is generally gonna be under publications or conference proceedings. And then we can go back and like I mentioned, the author profiles are there. We also have the statistical information. Their default is to keep it minimized. I like to expand it. Um, everything's been running super slowly this morning. I apologize. Um, but if you expand it, it's gonna take forever. It's kind of disappointing compared to what VPress had with the live download feature, but, but there is a but. Um, since we are, um, DSpace is an open source um, software. So there are other institutions that have developed um, a download map comparable to what BPress um, was offering. So this is TSpace out of the University of Toronto. They also um, use DSpace, TSpace, DSpace. Um, and they have this down, a live download um, feature as well. So once, there, there are so many little hiccups that we need to work through. Once, once we get through all of that um, with, at Meyer, our vendor, this is this is at the top of my list to get them to integrate. Like I, I miss our live download maps. I want that back. Oh, here it is. See, it's this color sort of thing. You can cover over the country and see where things have been downloaded from. It's just not as engaging as as our old map. That's my one of the big things I miss. Um, since the migration, you can see the number of downloads per the you know the buckets that we have: student research, university scholarship, and then department and author profiles. Um, you can see downloads by country, and then you can see the top authors um, within the repository. They're giving us the top five there. Um, and oh, top item. There's also the option to view like page hits. Um, that was uh, some feedback we got from faculty prior to the migration that BPress also offered the metadata like page hits on their author dashboard. People just didn't care about that. Um, it's not any kind of meaningful statistic because it doesn't show that anyone actually downloaded it. Because um, we know at least download is a step towards a potential citation, whereas a metadata page hit, there's always so many of those as compared to the actual downloads. And then you can see the top items here. Um, so I thought like a little behind the scenes, I can show you, uh, let's see, we'll look at um, like a department page, how that can look. Let me check my notes to make sure I'm keeping us on track. Uh, department pages. Yep, we'll go ahead and look at those and then we'll dive into the author profiles. And since, you know, this is the library, we've got some library folks here, I figured I'll pick on us. So you can start by searching for just library. All right. And you can see the different items that pop up. Um, these are some of the old, uh, like holdover structures that we had from B Press. Um, I haven't removed any of them yet because we're still kind of deciding what makes the most sense for how we feature items in the repository. This is what I'm playing around with. I'll show you that later. But the university library is here. You can see all of our scholarship, um, 58 items. You can narrow it. In here, it's just gonna be publications. Um, some people like the tile view, um, but then you can also view the authors that we have. Um, within the repository. And I will go ahead and pick on Abby since she's here. Um, you can go ahead and see all of Abby's content. Again, you can switch to the tile view. Everything is a publication. I'd like to add another field where we can designate, uh, where we can be a little more explicit beyond publication. Because um, technically these are all published in some way through the repository or through a publisher. That being said, they all are different types of content. So it'd be nice if authors could arrange it in that way. 
Um, and then Abby can also go down to here, here and show her statistical information so she could see her top items. Um, so if she's, I don't know, going up for her review and she says, you know what, I really wanna focus more on developing content for users, uh, for people who wanna develop OERs. Um, Cause I can see that that is my top downloaded item. It's getting some, lots of attention. So this is where I'd like to focus my time and attention in the coming year. She can pull some of this information. Um, or if they're like, you know what, we really want you to develop some of these really cool posters that you did once upon a time. She's like, mm, you know what, they're not getting as many downloads. Um, I think my time is better spent on OERs. Just a way you could kind of play around with the information you have there. Let's see, we went through the statistics on her page. Um, oh, I was gonna to talk to you about some of the things that are still the same with the repository. We are still providing the same services that we did to you. So uh, copyright clearance, we're still doing that. You still wanna send us your articles um, and have us handle the uploading and copyright clearance for you. We will absolutely do that. Like I mentioned, you can kind of in the future play around with this function of depositing content yourself and we'll set up a workflow where they call it like a reviewer workflow. I hate that language because we're not reviewing your content. That is not our objective in any way, shape or form. Um, it's our job to assist you with increasing the visibility and impact of your scholarship. And in order to do that, we have to perform copyright clearance. So the language they have in there is that if uh, you send us something from Elsevier and we don't have permission to upload it, we then have to, the way it's framed is like reject your submission. And again, I hate that because we're not rejecting your submission. We're just saying, hey, this version that you sent us, we're not able to use. Do you have a manuscript that we could possibly use? Um, so we're going to pilot this workflow first and foremost with um, the students that are submitting creative components. Um, they're a good test group um, because they, they're, <laughs> from what I hear from the graduate college, there's a lot of revisions that have to go uh, back and forth. So we'll work that out with them, refine the language, and then we're going to unleash this on everyone um, here soon. Um, I can walk you through how to create an author profile if you want to see that. Um, Go ahead and do that. Uh, a nice thing about this too is we were able to integrate with Octa. So you can just do login with Shibboleth and it'll use your login information for that. Um, so then you go ahead, log in. It'll take a minute. Spinning or the dots, they kill me. I get really impatient and I just always refresh it. And that seems to help. Of course, not at this moment. <sighs> well, it's not cooperating with me. I see some of you, I think you all are creating your profiles as you're sitting here. Uh, I'm getting the email, so that's great. <laughs> Glad that someone's able to do it. Um, so it must not be too terribly difficult. I will give you a, a warning. I was gonna do this in my demo. It asks for your staff ID number in there. Please don't give that to us. I, I have no need for that information. I, I do not want it. And if God forbid, for some reason we're hacked in the future, I, I don't want anyone to have your staff ID information. Um, so don't, please don't enter that. I've asked them to remove that. We're working on it. Um, some other exciting things coming with the repository we can now um, integrate with DataShare. Uh, I need to follow up with you, Megan, at some point, make sure that's actually working properly. Um, get some test cases to make sure that the items. So the way it's going to work is that uh, Yelena from uh, Architecture, um, she's a really good example. She has published some data sets with Megan, and then she has gone on to publish articles um, with uh, some peer-reviewed journals using the data sets that are in data share. And so a way to see, look at you all doing so great. I'm getting tons of notices that everyone's creating a profile. Um, so she has the, the data set in data share and then she has this published article um, that she's sharing in the repository. And it'd be great if those two could connect to each other. People who find the article or find the data set could then find the article and vice versa. Um, there was kind of a clunky way that we could do that in BPress, um, but now the way it should be working, and again, Megan and I need to test this and make sure it's actually functioning properly, um, is that uh, like a dummy record of all the items in DataShare are visible in the repository and will redirect you back to, um, to DataShare. We're, we're not hosting any of their content because Lord knows we are, we are not a data repository. Um, that is what DataShare is for, but they, so they should be searchable within the repository. Um, Another exciting feature we're looking forward to is um, integrating more with our uh, 
open access uh, or the read and publish agreements. That's what it is. Um, so a lot of the, the big publishers, they can automatically deposit um, any articles that are published under our read and publish agreements into the repository. Again, previously, it was kind of a clunky workflow where it was dependent upon the authors to let us know with B Press, like, hey, uh, the university paid for me to uh, publish this thing. Can we put it in there? So now it should just automatically happen. Um, I need to work that out with uh, one of our librarians in-house, Matthew Goddard, to make sure that is it going to happen in badge? Is it going to happen one at a time? But at least the capability is there, whereas we did not have that before. Um, go over my list. Let's see. Copyright clearance potential. Oh, and then the last big one. Um, I need to follow up with John Van Dyke on this. Um, I believe he's still with BioIT. Um, They've created the what's called ISU sites. Those are, I assume most of you have heard about those. Those are the faculty web pages that you all can have um, on your department. Um, they're interested in pulling content from the repository, so uh, your published articles, and then linking them to the ISU sites so that you don't need to worry about updating links or maintaining anything. Your content from the repository can automatically be pulled into your author profiles on your department page. Um, so again, that's an exciting, upcoming implementation that we're looking forward to and we're going to play around with. But I think those are my big things, kind of the overviews of why we migrated, what the site is kind of structured like now, um, services we will be adding, things that aren't changing. I think those are my big hits. Um, but I want to leave a lot of time for questions, comments, feedback on your end, because I, I think I said this at the beginning. I know some people have joined since then. This repository does not work if it doesn't work for you. We are committed to being a service oriented repository. So let me know what doesn't work for you because I am currently hammering <laughs> our vendor with lots of this needs to be fixed, this needs to be fixed. So now is a really good time to make sure I get that on the list for them. So feel free to ask me any questions. Let me know if there's something you missed. There, oh, are, there yes. are a couple in the chat. And okay. uh, after that, we do have a couple hands raised. Okay. Uh, I saw Jay's hand first, I'll let him go. Okay, yeah, thanks. I hope this is pretty exciting. Um, quick question about the uh, the current, the B Press one, is it still going to exist? Because it is linked to other universities, right? And other universities have, are hosting some of our sites. So is it going to continue to exist for a while? Like are our profiles in, in that? So yeah, it's this interesting middle ground. The, the repository has gone away, but the author profiles within B Press, those still exist. Um, and the, the funky thing is I can still get in and access and edit them. You can as well. Um, we've had a few authors that have, have gone in and done that. Um, and the way B Press sold it once upon a time was that, well, no, these, these are unique you know, URLs to each individual author. So they're yours. The site belongs to you. You can turn off, like if you need to leave Iowa State University, you could turn off the ISU branding site and it would still be yours. Um, we haven't poked the bear necessarily with B Press and asked like, hey, are, are you guys gonna shut these down at any point in time? Cause we don't want them to be like, oh, right. We should, we should just shut that down. Um, so we're- will, will, they oh, not be update, will it not be updated anymore? It'll just be- That's the tricky of, thing. Uh, so content it, that's added to the, um, our DSTAS repository will no longer import over there. Um, a workaround solution, if that is the, if that's the author profile that you prefer to maintain is that when one of our team members sends you like says, oh, hey, uh, Lisa gets back to you and says, hey, Jay, I uploaded this for you. You can copy that URL that she sent you and you can add it manually to that site if you would like to. Um, that being said, I really am curious to see what um, we can do with the ISU sites team because that might be, again, something that's already integrated into your department page that can automatically import all of the content that you have in the repository. Um, so I think that could be a really interesting solution to some of these concerns. Perfect. All right, I, I see Joshua's hand and then maybe we can go to the chat um, with questions. Well, sure, I'm happy to jump in. Oh, okay. <laughs> um, I, 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 have a, I have a couple of observations. So um, we've had, uh, the economics department has a uh, working paper series, which we've uh, run through, through yes. the digital repository. And um, with this transition, one of the things that happens is if you go to that list, um, the, the default display, uh, 
I mean, there, there are nearly 3,000 items in this, and the the way it displays them seems to be entirely random. I don't know what uh, what it, what the ordering is. Um, mm -hmm. You'll see the first one shows up in 1996. Yeah. Um, I would really like to be able, and maybe there's a way to do this, to have the default for this uh, show the most recent items first. Okay. okay. Uh, so I don't know if there's a if there's a switch that that allows for that. Um, yeah. as the default I mean yes yes someone can sort it but mm -hmm. they have to get here and then they have and and it looks like the sort here says relevance title ascending or title descending yeah alphabetically it's not helpful show, yeah no <laughs> date date really needs to be the priority a, an option mm -hmm. um the other thing that I mean or another thing in looking at the university scholarship um None of the none of the items there, um, at least in the top of the list, um, are unpublished. So working papers, and yes. I think we need to be better about featuring working papers to say these are things that are in progress, um, yes. because that's something that universities produce, and it's an important kind of communication that we're doing. And push it, forcing them into publications is is a problem. Um, then uh, two other things that I did just create in it. I, I did just so sort of get myself registered and I noticed that the end user agreement is nonsense. It doesn't, you know, <laughs> so you might want to change that. Yeah, uh, yeah. And, that's, um, that's been a ticket then, for a while. Yeah. yeah. But um, no, thank, then, thank you. <laughs> yeah. And then um, uh, when I go to my profile, I'm not seeing any of any of the 30 some things that are in my, uh, I mean, so if I go to, if I go, go to my, uh, you know, I mean, so I've logged in and then if I go to my profile, uh, I just don't see any of my items. Uh, if I go to my D space, I'm assuming okay. that's where I would go. It's blank. Okay. Now, if I search for myself, um, I find a lot of stuff. So I don't know what happened to break that link. It looks like uh, it looks like not everything of yours has your name tagged on it um, as a because the way they're treating everything is so that every department is an uh, is an item technically. Every publication uh -huh. is an item, every author is an item. So you have to make sure the relationships are there between the items. So when I say you, I do not mean you specifically. That is something we will take care right. of as the cleanup. Um, okay. <laughs> so I'll go through right. and make sure that, Great. yeah, because I know you have far more than six items. Um, well, I, I, I mean, my, my, if I, if I go to my D space, I don't see anything. Which is, so yeah, and I wonder, it let you, it's like it yeah. let you create a duplicate profile because the way it's supposed to work Apparently, is that, yeah. Yeah. Well, I, try, someone... I tried to sign in, I mean, I, 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 I just signed in, mm -hmm. I didn't actually create a profile, I just signed in. Just signed in, okay. In Shibola, uh, and, and this is where it took me. Interesting. So okay. I don't know what happened. And I, if it's okay with you, I would love to follow yeah. up with you on this because I sure. am with you in that I, I hate the way that the working papers are represented in the repository. Um, it got messy there near the end. The top priority was, okay, let's get all of our content out and all of our statistics. We cannot lose those things. Um, but yes, the way it's represented there, there is lots of room for lots of improvement. Um, okay. Well, so, anyhow, those are <laughs> just some random random observations and I've taken enough of your time. No, but I appreciate them. Thank you. Okay. I, let's see, I'll hop in the chat and see, I'm going to go all the way up to the top. Oh, Megan likes the open access poster or horror posters. Um, I need to expand this because I'm having trouble scrolling. A question, are these download numbers only counting downloads through Iowa State or also the journals that they're publishing? They're only counting downloads through this repository platform um, through Iowa State. They are not counting them. Um, it's not a, a kind of collective view the way like uh, Google Scholar will give you a, an overarching view of um, your citation count or anything like that. It's frustrating, but again, um, if there's something you're dreaming up that you'd like to see, let me know because now that we're on an open source platform, there's the possibility that maybe we could do it. Um, I can't, I, I don't necessarily need to give you a hard and fast no anymore. Um, let's see. Oh, it looks like Abby responded. These are only downloads through our system. Thank you, Abby. Um, we cannot try publisher downloads. Makes perfect sense. Uh, things never work smoothly during a demo hole. Thanks, Abby. 
<laughs> um, oh, Susan couldn't get in. I think I saw that you're in now, Susan. I was curious about data share and the read and publish agreements. Abby linked that. Uh, typical for the site to take a long time to log in. Uh, yes, yes, Susan, it is typical. It's uh, it's frustrating. There's there's a timeout issue. Um, refreshing seems to work. Opening a new window seems to work. Those are not acceptable solutions. I'm not satisfied with them. I'm staying, trying to stay on top of the vendor. They've been working on resolving this issue for a while. Um, my understanding are there's still some kinks with DSpace 7. Um, our thought process during the migration was we could um, pay to go into DSpace 6, or we could pay to go into DSpace 6 and then have to pay again to upgrade and migrate to DSpace 7. Or we thought, you know what, we'll just get ahead of the game. We'll, we'll be innovators. Um, we'll go on to this, this new cutting edge version of DSpace, DSpace 7. Problem is um, when, a, when a software is still in development and it, that development is community driven, things can be a lot slower. Um, so it definitely did slow down the process, but they are, they're continually working on it and implementing updates. So unfortunately, yes, it does at the moment take a long time, but I'm, I'm working towards getting some resolution for that. Okay, Joshua had, I think I answered your questions, Joshua. Um, Kara, I'm not sure I understand your question, like a widget on the faculty page. That was about the faculty sites. Okay. Okay. Looks like you handled that, Abby. Kara, give a thumbs up. Um, yes, more sort options would be excellent. I agree. Um, I don't know how you all feel. Feel free to give me feedback on this. I I am missing the ability to sort specifically on both like department pages and on the author pages to sort by like publication types. Um, having just a publication, I I agree. It it diminishes. <laughs> The value of different types of publications, but also it can create um, repetition. Sometimes there are uh, conference presentations that have the exact same title as published articles, um, and they both have, you know, equal value but totally different uses, um, and that can be confusing to an end user to look at it. And also, um, like a department, if they want to say, like, well, you know, my my department has. X number of published articles, X number of conference proceedings, whatever it is, that's not something you can say if you're just looking at this massive screen of publications. Yeah, it would be really useful to be able to sort by journal articles, extension publications, working papers, technical reports, and so forth. And of course, there's, you know, a never ending, you know, number of categories, but I think there are some probably a top 10 that we might be able to, to do. Because that, that was really helpful in the in the previous one to be able to categorize on our kind of our main page by different kinds of publication. Okay. Yeah, there are filters for subject date department, so it could potentially be a filter for different publication. We got item type. Yeah, some of the feedback I, I've gotten from users is that they get burnt out on having to filter. Um, <laughs> It, which I, I get it um, and it'd be nice to just like show up and have your profile look exactly how you want it or a department page have a, a consistent look and appearance for department pages so that chairs can come in um, and see like okay yep here if I want to look at our uh, theses and dissertations I can do that oh someone did someone raise a hand oh Jay go ahead sorry I don't mean to be so so talk to you <laughs> no. but, uh, I do have a question about it because you mentioned like the profile page so it looks like there's profile, which is really just your basic information. And then there's the my D space. Is that what what are we looking at here? My D space, uh, my D space is your back end. So let's see if I can go in and view my D space. It's gonna look a lot different than yours. I'm gonna move you all over here so that I can get into it. My D space. Yeah. Um it shows yes. you it, yours probably looks blank. Here's my guess. Exactly. It's blank. I'm still so learning. I'm just, <laughs> yeah. I guess my question is, is this something that we're going to build out ourselves or, I mean, is this our like back door that it's just for us or what is it? Uh, theoretically you could, I don't know that that's the direction we should head in. So the reason mine looks like this, and if you all started uploading your own content, I think this is what yours would look like as well. These are items that I have uploaded to the repository recently. I hate this term archived because it's not necessarily archived. It's, it's posted to the repository. Um, but yes, if you, your DSpace looks blank, but theoretically what your DSpace should actually do is should show you your author profile and all the content that you have there and then should allow you to 
to edit and tinker with it to some degree. Um, and that's what we need to decide what that degree is. Um, if you want to replace a PDF, there might need to be some, some mitigation there of like, oh shoot, okay, actually we're not allowed to use that version from the publisher. Could we, could we see if we can find a manuscript? Um, something like that. Um, but if you want to, for working papers, I'd love to see that with our econ faculty that they could actually go in here, they could update the PDF, they could, you know, update the abstract, do all that themselves and go ahead and post it so that I, I know, and I, I feel the same way with a lot of my stuff. Sometimes they don't want to have to work on someone else's clock. They would, if they want to make a change, they just want to go in there and make that change um, and not have to wait for someone else to do it. So that's my dream is that when you log into my DSpace, you should be able to see and tinker with the items on your page. Currently, it's going to look blank because none of you have uploaded content. That's my suspicion. Um, so did that answer the question? Okay. Okay. Yeah, thanks. All right, should I go back to the chat? Where did I lost it? Here we go. Um, uh, let's see. Do, do, do. May. Oh, Susan logged in. Is there a roadmap in the works for future development improvements? Um, it's not a, a formal roadmap per se. There's there's a giant spreadsheet of things that need to currently be fixed. Um, but as we're working on fixing those things and then putting together a roadmap for future improvements, I, I would love to give me give me all of your ideas, give me all of your suggestions. Um, public list would be good to let people know what changes are in process. I agree. That would be that is a really good idea. Um, I wonder if there's a way that we could house that both on. Megan, of course, my mind is like going to live answers because um, that's all, all we're doing right now. But yeah, some way to make that list forward facing uh, would be a good idea. And then Joshua, seeing a bunch of markup in the text. Yeah, the HTML. No, nope. they fixed that on the dev server and they're working. They were supposed to deploy that last week. Um, it should be deployed later. It should be deployed right now. Um, but yes, you're right. The HTML markup is super annoying. Um, and we can find a place to put the roadmap. Okay. I think I worked through everyone's, did I miss There was questions? one more. Uh, okay. Susan said uh, they seem to have two profiles, one with their name uh, with the diacritic and one without. Uh, can these be merged for her? They, that is a, a really nice thing. Um, I'll play around with that for you later today, Susan. I'll make a note, um, Susan profiles. Susan profiles. Um, the way it used to work with B-Press, if there was an issue with, Basically, you could not, you could not fix or edit or like remove a profile. Now, I theoretically, what I've been told, um, you can, you can remove a profile. So I will, I will tinker that with that for you today, Susan, and see if I can merge them or remove one. Um, I'll reach out to see what your preference is. Um, but yes, all the items should exist, so I could just remove your person item and recreate it exactly how you want it to. Um, looks like different content on the two profiles. Okay. Again, that shouldn't be an issue to fix, but I'll play around with it. And then Joshua, you have your hand up. Um, yeah, so I was I was just doing playing around. I'm playing around. It's a dangerous thing. Um, no, go I'm for it. Br browsing by author, and so you've got uh, zero through nine, and then uh, then the alphabet at the top. And if you do something like um, click on R, um, what you get are people whose first initial is R. So oh, like R.C. Williams, and, and I mean, I, I'm sorry, but you're contributing to the decline of Western civilization at the moment, um, because um, this is a library. We ought to understand about yep. alphabetization. Yep. Well, and I love how when I click on R, there's nothing. There's literally, there's nothing at all. Really? Oh if, you, if you're browsing by author, you get... I went to academic and administrative profiles, and I clicked by no. author. I, I just, I, I'm sorry, I'm in, I'm in collections, I think. So, oh, okay. So, I, you know, so I just started uh, uh, in collections by author. Okay. And then if you, if you click, a, click a letter, what you get are people whose first initial is. R and not. Yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. So. That's. Um, well, okay, that's really weird because what you got is yeah. different. But, well, but what I yeah, what I, I when I do that, I get the, the first item is R. C. Williams. Yeah, I got and the same one. If you R. go up to Williams, yeah. if you go up to collections, okay, hey, search by collection. No, no, no oh, just the to, collections oh. up top. Okay, and then hit the drop down and then hit author by author. By author, okay. Ah, 
and it's problematic that it's different. It's not, <laughs> yep. Yeah. Is it both of those things are, are problematic? <laughs> yeah. And so I, I I started off with this in the beginning and I want to say it now. <laughs> As you're playing around, no, I, I encourage playing around with the site um, because this is a massive site and being able to touch it, play around with it by myself, it, it's just impossible. There's so many, as we've found right now, there's so many different ways that you can find that things are wrong. Um, you will not hurt my feelings. Uh, and frankly, you shouldn't care if you do hurt my feelings. Um, but if you find something that's wrong and not right, let me know. Um, this is a representation of our institution and I want it to look good. I want it to be right. Um, and the only way we're going to get there is if you all play around with it and, and don't just let it go. Let me know. Hey, Hope, this, this looks stupid. This makes us look stupid. Um, so thank you for pointing that out. It needs to, uh, and it's good to have an example. So I can see that it's, it's working properly through one approach, but not through another. So I will submit a ticket and ask them to reorder that. Um, all right. Any other questions, comments, thoughts, concerns, um, things you miss, things you hate? Um, I want to, I want to beef up the author profiles. That's a dream of mine. Um, they just, they look bland. They look boring. They don't look exciting. Um, yeah, they don't look like something you want to link from anywhere. Yeah. So, hey, hope. I had, a, I had a question. So, hi, I'm Robin. We still haven't actually had a chance to sit down. I'm sorry. No, about that. no, it's you've been busy. <laughs> um, so, if I start on the repository homepage and I go down and I click on the author profiles okay. image, mm -hmm. I don't get to author profiles. I get to department profiles. Oh, if you click on the image, okay. <laughs> oh wait, Chase. Okay, because well, with my, I clicked on both of them. So you have academic and administrative profiles. Those are supposed to be the authors and then academic okay, and click. all right. So go ahead and click on academic and administrative profiles. Okay. And what I see, oh, wait, no, it's changed now. This is weird. Okay. Yeah. But if I then go by author. If you go to units, it should take you to uh, the different departments. Um, all right. Then I just wasn't paying attention to where no, I was going. But if you Actually, if you do, if you go scroll up a little bit, Hope. Yep. And then see the on the browse tabs there, if you go over to by author. By author. And click. Then yes, that was it. Stop. No. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I mean, a department could be an author, but I'm pretty sure that's not what you mean. <laughs> nope, it's not. And it, it's funny how they're having it work backwards. I see how they're thinking about it in theory that like, no, nah, uh, nope. This is important. This is good stuff. Yep, so many things. Okay, um, I'm trying to think how to frame this fix to them. Authors should have authored. Yeah, I'm just gonna copy this link. Uh, thank you. <laughs> no, no, thank you. <laughs> uh, it's one of those when Abby and Megan asked me to do this, I'm like, this is the site's not ready. It's problematic, but honestly. The best group of users to tell me about that are people that actively use the repository. Um, okay. Any, we have, yeah, I think an extra, does this go to 950 or till 10 o'clock? I can't remember, Abby and Mike. Technically it goes till 10. Okay. Okay. Well, and it, yeah, if I understand people all have different communication styles. So if you'd prefer to just shoot me an email for your questions, um, set up a meeting, I, I can meet virtually, I can meet in person. Um, I'm fine with oh, whatever. What's, what's the best email? Is it the DigiRep? Or Go ahead and send it to DigiRep. Um, or if you have my, I know, I think I got an email from Beth as we were sitting here. Hi, Beth, by the way. Um, whatever works. Um, but yes, DigiRep. Um, I can put that in the chat for everyone, just in case you don't off the top of your head know how to spell DigiRep. And oh, before anyone tells me the contact page is broken, I believe me. I know. Yep. Yep. Yeah. Uh, I asked again this morning if we could get that fixed because people are having to use, they're trying to find workarounds. Someone emailed our head of IT last night to tell me there was an issue because uh, it's fun. If you go to our contact us, it doesn't work. But if you go to, let's see, blog, click on that because that takes you to our digital homepage. Then you can do contact us. 
and it works. It's a relatively easy fix. Um, they're waiting to deploy it because they want to deploy it with some bigger fixes, and I'm letting them know that no people need to be able to contact us. That that can't that can't wait another week. Um, so our big prior like I'm trying to focus on the big priorities. We got our statistics. We got our content. Um, we are on an open source platform, so we can theoretically control our destiny. Um, this is we, a learning and growing process. It's going to be a little bit painful. Um, you all have been so incredibly kind and generous um, in your feedback. Uh, I told Abby, I'm like, if someone yells at me about this, I wouldn't be surprised because I, I understand people invest a lot in the repository. Um, it's You all put a lot of time and energy into getting your content in here um, and working with us to get it just right. So I wanna make sure that we're doing the best we can by you, make sure that we're representing it properly. So, yeah. Um, so, so Hope, uh, just a couple, of, uh, one other thought, I, I, you know, it might be good on the front page, you know, to to say at least for a while have a pop up or something else that says this is a work in progress, so that people who arrive here understand that we're building this car as we're driving down the highway. No, uh, you know, it, rather than thinking that they're getting, you know, so, so the fact that there are some glitches is is tolerated and I, and I think people will give you some time you know i mean put a date on this um yeah. don't leave it up for for the semester but uh you know ideally you know within a month we're converging to something that that makes more sense and um and, you know and, and people will be patient in that short run so i think that that would be helpful i, um, I agree and i guess i i i'm i i guess i would say that um, as as a department which relies on this for getting our material out, um, I, I, I would have appreciated, maybe there was some communication with the person who was managing our website, but I don't think we heard about the transition before it happened. And okay. it might have been good to, to know about that because we do have a bunch of integration with this. And, uh, you know, or with the, with certainly with the, with the, the previous version and we hope with this version so yeah. no um, and i yeah i apologize for that um like it was it was years in the making the the launch was delayed by a year we were at the last minute considering doing another year with b press and the plug but you're right i apologize i, I think we reached out it would have been at least a year ago now um okay. so i i don't i i don't blame anyone for being like for that falling off the radar um but no it, this was a uh, it was a learning and growing experience for myself and our team managing this. Um, but you're right, we could have done a better job communicating when the plug was being pulled. Um, well, and, and I do, I want to say thank, thank you for, for doing this today and for um, working to make this a, a, be, a better resource for all of us. I appreciate that. Happy, happy to do it. Like I said, this repository is nothing without all of you. So I really appreciate your feedback. I agree. I, I really appreciate it for years, all the work that you all do behind the scenes. And, you know, when you shoot an email and say, hey, I saw a publication <laughs> pop up, I'm going to put it up. Do you have a you have a man manuscript version of that? I really appreciate how much work you all put into to helping us get our work out there. So, um, you know, anything I can do to help, you know, get this one into tip top shape, I'm happy to. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Jay. And thank you, Joshua, both of you for your feedback. I really appreciate it. Got a chat. David Starling says, thank you. Thank you, David. You have a great day too. All right. Um, seems like people need to sneak out, but yeah. Um, if anyone has any last minute questions, thoughts, feelings, I'm happy to hang around. I, I do. Sorry yes. to ask so many questions. No, love um, it. I, was, I was just looking on my author. I just searched my, for myself and I see I've got four entries and, and I know Susan had mentioned something <laughs> about that too. And I'm just wondering, is there going to be a, a way to, to bring those together? I will fix that for you because, and that's not, that drives me bonkers. Either I will fix that, it or I have a vendor fix it. I'm not going to have any of you all fix okay. that. Cause yeah. you're right. I look, I this searched was under, the, under the browsing by author is what I did. And it came up with, um, you know, just a list of, oh no, I did. I typed in ARB. Okay. ARB. To try to okay. just get. In the, it kills me though. Cause and this is what I've been trying to tell our team. They said they've got it fixed. They show me a few that look like it's fixed. And I could, there's, I believe there's now 900 faculty profiles that we have of authors that are actively participating so it's like you do a test check on a few of them it's like okay they look good and then so if you go if you go to 
collections than okay. brow by author. By author. And then ARB and then you typed in? ARB. Uh -huh. Okay. And article J, it looks like you got 14, then 12, then 86, then one. Ah. Yep. <laughs> yep. Uh huh. All right. Another. You have to name yourself consistently, Jay. Yeah, that's and that's a hard thing to do. <laughs> no, but see, oh, no, you I, should not. I'm but, I'm giving him a hard time. Oh, I, I know. No, I totally know you are. No, I I understand. It's and that was sorry. I'm frustrated because that was a a selling point to them on this pitch. Oh, there's no more. There's no more messing up author. Like you can enter your name however you want. We're working off of the email address. So as long as your email address is attached to all these things, it doesn't really matter how you're representing your name. Okay, well, I, Jay and I have been working together a long time on this repository. I, I think I uploaded your first item to the repository. I know your email address is in there. I know it's in there because I entered it. I entered it all these times. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so it kills me that it's like, how, why? Ugh, all right. So add that to my list of things. Um, right, no, I got you. Arbuckle listed. Multi times. I'm going to copy this link as well. So I have something to send them and point to and be like, see, so then this is not right. Okay. Here we go. All right. Anything else? I'm ha like, seriously, if any of you are finding weird stuff like this, send me a link, tell me it's wrong. And at this point, I have someone else that I can pester to fix it. So, so in order to, when you, when we have feedback, you want us to do to the the digi was it digi? You can digi do digi rep. Yep, that's fine. Okay. And so just that's a good of, way. It's okay. Just to shoot an email. We we see something. Yep. We have an idea. Shoot an email. And yep. I'm thanks. usually the one that manages that. But if I'm out of the office, uh, one of our team members manages it. So and they're, I think you've all worked with all of them. They're great. So um oh, there's a chat. Let's see. Thanks, Hope. It's clear how much hard work. Oh, thank you, Dave, uh, Derek, um, Robin, Orchid. You want or okay? I will. I want that too, Robin. Like I said, I've been pestering uh, B Press for that for years. So yes, an integration with Orchid. And we want to, uh, my hope and dream is that we could work, the VPR's office is my understanding, like they're pushing really hard for integration with Orchid because they can pull some larger institutional stats from that. So I want to pick their brain and figure out what they really need with an Orchid integration before we dive into it. Because I don't want to integrate Orchid for my own sake. Um, that'd be great. But if we're going to do it, I want to make sure that the people that are going to use it what they want out of it so all right i'm happy to hang out but if you all need to take off for different meetings that's okay i completely understand <laughs>